Hi friends, welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 7th March 2019, we are going to discuss the topics Swatch Surveyction 2019 Awards, Model Code of Conduct, then Megha Tropicus or Saral Altiga, then Indian Museum of Natural History, then Current Affairs Capsule, Map Aided Program and PQR. Then our first topic is Swatch Surveyction 2019 Awards. So the President of India uh, presents this Swatch Surveyction 2019 Awards. Okay. And uh, this Indore has been awarded the cleanest city in the country and Bhopal, it has been declared as the cleanest capital under this Swatch Surveyation Award. Okay, so Indore, it got the cleanest city in the country award and Bhopal, it has been declared as the cleanest capital. And then Ujjain. It has, it has backed the Cleaner City Award in the population category of 3 lakh to 10 lakh. And Ahmedabad, it also uh, got the Cleaner City Award in 10 lakh plus population category. And other thing to be noted that Indo, it retained the Cleaner City for 3 consecutive years. So, for three consecutive years, it has been getting this Cleaner City Award. Okay, then let us see the objective. So, why it has been conducted? To inculcate a spirit of healthy competition among the cities towards becoming the cleanest cities. And uh, every year, the cities and towns across India they have been awarded with the title of Swatch Cities on the basis of their cleanliness, then sanitation uh, drives uh, as a part of this Swatch Bharat Abhyan. And it has been conducted under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs under Swatch Bharat Mission Urban. Okay, we have already uh, discussed about the Swatch Bharat Mission in our area, earlier classes. And in that, we know that there are two, that is Swachh Bharat Mission Urban and Swachh Bharat Mission Rural. And this, uh, it has been conducted under Swachh Bharat Mission Urban. Okay. And uh, this Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, it conducted its first survey of Swachh Surveyation in 2016 for ranking among 73 cities in uh, January 2016 and then the second survey it was conducted in 2017 to rank 434 cities and in 2018 the survey was conducted to rank 4203 cities and now this Swatch Surrection 2019 Swatch Surveyation 2019 it has scaled at greater heights, that is, that means covering 4,237 cities. So, to implement this, first we have to get the proper source of the data. And this data has been collected from the municipal body and interactions with the officials. And it accounts for 45 percentage of the um, data collected. And then second one, we collect the data from the citizen feedback and it occupies a weightage of 30 percent and this third one that is direct observation by the survey agency and it occupies a weightage of 25 percentage. So the higher weightage is given to data by the municipal body and interaction with officials. Then and uh, to calculate the areas of evaluation there has been an order and this order I have given in the decreasing weightage, okay. That is first one, door to door collection, then sweeping, collection and transportation, then processing and disposal of public and community toilet provision, 
then individual toilet provision, then strategy for open defecation free town and integrated solid waste management, then information, education and behavioral change. So, these are the areas of evaluation in the order of decreasing weightage. Okay. So, if the city's population is greater than 1 lakh, it has to, uh, has to be evaluated in a national scale and if its population is less than 1 lakh, then it has to be evaluated in a regional manner. Okay. So, this is a topic from government interventions. Then, coming to our second topic that is model code of conduct. So, it is a topic from polity. And what is this model code of conduct? We know that it is a set of norms. It is laid on by the election commission of India with the consensus of political parties. So, please note that it is not statutory. That is, it is not legally binding. Actually, this code of conduct, it spells out the do's and don'ts for election. And uh, all, all of them, that is the political parties, candidates and the polling agents, they are expected to observe this um, code of conduct. Okay. So, it was introduced in the 1960 assembly election in Kerala. And this code of conduct, it has evolved over the years to include behavior norms for the party in power and public servants who report to it. Okay, then when is this court enforced? So, we know that it is being enforced on the announcement of the poll schedule. That is when the election is being announced, this uh, code of conduct is enforced and it remains operational till the process is concluded as it has been given in the notification. And it is also applicable to a caretaker government on premature dissolution of a state assembly. That is in the case of Telangana. So, it is also applicable to a caretaker government. That is a, a premature dissolution of the state assembly. In that case also this, it is applicable. <laughs> there. Let us look how this is enforced. So, the election commission ensures that the ruling parties at the center and in the state, they adhere to this code of conduct and uh, it is uh, mandatory for the uh, free and fair election, for conducting free and fair election under article 324 of the constitution. Anyone can report the violations uh, in the election to the election commission or they can approach the court. And the election commission has devised several mechanisms uh, to take a note on its offences. And the latest one uh, or a latest mechanism which has been introduced is Sea Vigil Mobile App. And by the introduction of this Sea Vigil Mobile App, uh, we will get the audio visual evidence of malpractices that can be reported. Let us see some of the key malpractices or what are the key malpractices. Any activity that are aggravating the existing differences or uh, creating a mutual hatred or uh, we can say causing a tension between different caste or communities or religious or linguistic is a correct practice under the representation of the people act. So, it can be considered, such activities can be considered as malpractices and also bribery to voters, that is giving some bribe to voters. Uh, it is both a correct practice and uh, also it is an electoral offence under the section 171B of Indian Penal Code. And uh, another, we can say that another malpractice is using the places of worship for campaigning then uh, intimidation of the voters, it is also an electoral offence. And also while impersonating, it is punishable under 
IPC. And also serving or distributing liquor on the election day and uh, we can say holding public meetings during the 48 hour period ending with the hour fixed for closing of the poll. It is also an offense. These are some of the malpractices. Our next topic it is Mega Tropicus or Saral Altica. So, why it came in news? Because the ISRO and its French counterpart that is CNES, it sealed an agreement to set up a joint maritime surveillance system in India in May. So, the ISRO and CNE, they um, sealed an agreement to set up a joint maritime surveillance system in India in May. Let us see more details about the news. This agreement, it intends to uh, supply an operational system for detecting, identifying and tracking the ships in the Indian Ocean. And uh, these two nations, they will explore it by putting up a constellation of low earth orbiting satellites. And uh, they will identify and track the movements of ships. And another thing is that it also provides for maritime surveillance center uh, to be set, uh, and it, it is to be set up in India in May this year. And the two agencies have put up two climate and ocean weather monitoring satellites that is Megha Tropicus of uh, 2011 and uh, Saral Altica of 2013. And these are considered as a model. And uh, this fleet, it will be augmented with the launch of OceanSat 3 Argos mission in 2020 and a future joint infrared earth observation satellite. Clear? Then, let us see about Mega Tropicus. So, as I said, it is an Indo-French joint satellite mission and uh, basically it, it is for studying the water cycle, then uh, energy exchanges in the tropics, etc. And its main objective is to understand the life cycle of convective system that influence the tropical weather and um, what associated energy and moisture budget of the atmosphere in tropical regions. So, this Megha Tropicus, it is a Indo-French joint satellite mission for studying the water cycle and energy exchanges in the tropics. Then we have to note that it carries the following four payloads that is M-A-D-R-A-S that it stands for Microwave Analysis and Detection of Rain and Atmospheric Structure. So, actually uh, it is an imaging radiometer developed jointly by the CNES and ISRO, that is the first one and second one, uh, a sounder for probing vertical profiles for humidity, that is from CNES. Then uh, third one that is a scanner for radiation budget from CNES and it also contains a radio uh, occultation sensor for vertical profiling of temperature and humidity, that is ROSA, it is procured from Italy. So, it carries this four payloads. The next one that is Saral Altiga or uh, Saral or uh, it is a satellite with Argos and Altiga it is a cooperative altimetry technology. Okay, altimetry means uh, this altimetry technology mission of ISRO and CNES. Then uh, this altimetry it actually, it actually means measurement of the altitude and this Saral, it will actually, it will perform altimetric measurements that is designed to study ocean circulation and surface, I mean uh, sea surface elevation. Its function is to or it is designed to study ocean circulation and sea surface elevation. That is uh, measuring altimetric or you can say that it is used for altimetric measurements, taking or performing altimetric measurements. Then 
our next topic is Indian Museum of Natural History. So, uh, why we are discussing this because the government it is planning to house India's vast treasury of geological and paleontological specimens and uh, that will contain a wealth of scientific information about the planet and its history in one place that is an earth museum that is the government is going to set up a earth museum to hold uh, India's wealth of scientific information. Okay, so this museum it will be modeled on the American Museum of Natural History and uh, it will be set up as a public private partnership and it would be located somewhere in Delhi, Noida or Gurugram. So, and the actual thing is that India it does not have such a museum to, or museum of repute where it can compare its new findings with the with what it already have or already discovered. So, India does not have such a museum uh, of repute where it can compare those findings which it already have with its new findings. So, actually this uh, need for such a museum it was endorsed in the in, in a meeting by the Prime Minister's Science, Technology and Innovation Advisory Council. Okay. And we know that India has a rich geological history and fossils and uh, some of the prominent fossils are uh, jaw of extinct ape, then uh, we can say that dinosaur's egg. So, if such a museum is being set up, we can uh, preserve or conserve this rare fossils and uh, rare items in that. So, that is the relevance. And uh, a need for such a museum, it was endorsed in the meeting of the Prime Minister's Science, Technology and Innovation Advisory Council. Well, let us discuss some topics that is in current affairs capsule. The first one is Nepi. That is the Indonesian island of Bali, it is observing this Nepi or we can say that it is the day of silence and in that internet, mobile services and airports will be shut down and they dedicate this day as a self reflection that is they will shut up they will shut off everything that is internet mobile services and airport and dedicate themselves to a day of self reflection that is this navy okay the next topic is missile systems abroad so the american institute of aeronautics and astronautics it has selected j satish reddy so we know that he is the secretary of India's Department of Defense and Chairman of the DRDO and uh, this AIAA it has selected this uh, Sadish Reddy uh, uh, as the co-winner of 2019 Missile Systems Award. So the important thing is that he is the first person outside USA to be awarded with this prestigious award. Okay, actually this award it has been, um, it is a biennial award and it is presented for excellence in developing or implementing missile systems technology. So, that is regarding this missile systems award. So, it has been awarded to Sadish Reddy and it is a biennial award and it is presented for excellence in developing or implementing missile systems technology. Clear? Then, Bolo app. So, as the name suggests, it is a uh, app which is uh, launched by Google or we can say it is a tutor app and it is being uh, installed in the Android phones and it helps the children in rural India with their reading skills. And this Bolo Android app, it helps to improve both uh, Hindi as well as English reading skills of the kids in rural areas. Okay. In map aided program, we will be dealing with Gilgit Balistan. So, it is a region, it is situated in the Trans Himalayan region on the northwestern corner of Kashmir Valley or in the pa POK, that is Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which is a part of the Greater Kashmir State, that is this Gilgit Baltistan. Okay. 
let's see its location. So, it is uh, bordered by Park occupied Kashmir to the south and uh, um, Khyber Pakhtua province to its west, then Xinjiang province to its east, then uh, Vakhan corridor as in Afghanistan to its north and uh, Jammu and Kashmir to its southeast that is separated by the line of control. Okay, this is its location. So, here you can see the Gilgit Palestan and it is, uh, it is uh, shaded in red. Okay. Then, let us see some historical facts about the region. We know that the uh, Gilgit Balistan, it was a part of the formerly princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. That is, uh, at that time it was Kashmir and Jammu and the uh, Maharaja of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, uh, he devoured it was divided as the princely state. It consists of five regions. Okay, that is Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit Vasrath, and Gilgit Agency. So it was divided into these five regions at that time. Okay, and uh, actually it was illegally occupied by the Pakistan since it invaded the region after the partition of India. And uh, it became a separate administrative unit in 1970. At first, it was named as Northern Area. And this uh, name, Gilgit Pakistan, it, go, it was renamed in 2009. Okay. It is six times the size of POK. And uh, uh, it, 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 it has got the tallest mountains or we can say it has the longest of known polar glaciers. Okay, so it was renamed as Gilgit Balistan in 2009. So its former name was Northern Areas. Clear. Then, in PQRS, we will be having a question from economy. That is, economic growth is usually coupled with A. Deflation, B. Inflation, C. Taxation, and D. Hyperinflation. Actually, it is a very simple direct question. We know that uh, economic growth means it is all will be always related to inflation. That is inflation, we know that it is a general increase in all prices across the economy. So, when we want economic growth, there should be inflation. Then deflation, we know that it is, it is the general decrease in all prices across an economy, then uh, this hyperinflation means a very rapid increase in the price level across the economy and uh, stagflation, uh, there will be rise in price and falling of output. So, our answer will be inflation that is B. That is all for today's session. Thank you for listening. Good night.